My All right, so just make sure you close out of those things. All right, everyone. Well, good morning and welcome to episode 73 of the On Air Advocate. We're at the On Air Advocate. We look to provide education, support, and empowerment for all of those with different abilities, mental and medical illnesses, and their caregivers. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Tammy Flynn, and I am the host and producer of the On Air Advocate. And I am super excited that you are here joining us this morning, or if you are catching this on the replay. Now, as you know, as always, if you think any any of this content that we are talking about is relevant for anyone within your circle, please hit the share button and share the love with everyone else. Well, if some of you tuned in back in June, July timeframe, we had a whole series where we were looking at the lack of youth and adult changing tables across the United States. And today I am so excited because I am back here, not with one, not with two, not with three, not with four, but with five amazing moms on a mission that have been <laughs> campaigning, moving forward and fighting for this across the United States before we even <laughs> interviewed them, you know, back in June and now. And so I am so excited to welcome today, Christina, Paula, Sarah, Gina, and Keisha. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. 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 Uh, so I think that before we really dive into this and unload our advocacy on everyone this morning, <laughs> Um, I would like to start with Christina. Just a little bit of intro, a little bit about yourself, where you're from, all of that. My name is Christina Abernathy, and my page on Facebook is Love, Hope, and Autism. Um, I have three children, a daughter that is 15, and twin boys that are seven. Our one boy, Ethan, um, has autism and sensory processing disorder, and so a lot of the advocating and talking that I um, share about has to do with him. Um, he's definitely my momentum behind what I'm doing, um, and I'm very happy to be here and share what I'm doing here in Pittsburgh, and anxious to hear what everyone else is doing, too. Awesome. Paula. Hi, my name is Paula Connolly. Um, I have twin girls, Nakai and Nikayla. And Nakaya was born with cerebral palsy. Um, she's wheelchair bound. She can talk, but she cannot walk. Um, and I'm just basically a mom on a mission because um, we've had some experiences in the past as well with um, adult changing tables. So that's why I'm here. Nice to meet you. And Paula, where are you from? I'm sorry, I'm from <laughs> Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. Oh. Yes, and we're, we're praying for you guys right yeah. now that that hurricane goes the other way. Yes. The goes the other way. All right, Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah Knowles from Wisconsin, and I have two boys, 22-year-old and a 19-year-old. Uh, my 19-year-old has got CP and a genetic um, chromosome disorder. Um, he's in a wheelchair, and he uh, relies on diapers, so this is one of my causes that I fight for. Um, yeah, been fighting for a couple of years over this. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I will introduce myself just not as just the on-air advocate, but my name is Tammy Flynn and I am from Wisconsin and I have four children and my third child, Marcus, who is going to be turning 21 in November, um, was born with a brain injury. He had nerve breakage in his brain at birth and then he has multiple medical issues. And so when we come to lack of changing tables and facilities, he was not toilet trained until he was 10 years old. So some of these experiences I've also experience firsthand and I am here to campaign and fight till we get this right. All right, Gina, you're up. Awesome. Hi, Gina Ash, um, formerly of Milwaukee and just recently moved to the Pittsburgh area. So I've had the pleasure to meet a lot of these ladies um, in person. And I can tell you that um, for me, I have a 13 year old with um, severe autism. He's not verbal and not potty trained. And then I have a nine year old girl and a six year old boy. And I reached out to, I believe, Sarah even, and um, Christina here, uh, just to really help um, bring awareness. I take a 13-year-old into a women's bathroom on a regular basis, and you can all imagine the looks and stares and things that, that happen with that. So happy to be fighting with these ladies on an awesome mission. Thank you, Gina. And Keisha. Hi, I am Keisha Smith. I am from Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> And I have a 15 year old son who has um, some pretty significant disabilities, primarily cerebral palsy, and he uses a wheelchair and he's nonverbal. Um, and so all of us are here today, all of us, the moms are here today working towards the same mission. And that is to ultimately 
get um, organizations around the U.S. to install adult-sized changing tables, powered adult-sized changing tables in public restrooms. And why? Why? Because those who have outgrown the standard baby changing tables, um, the height and weight requirements, those who still have disabilities and require assistance with using the restroom, those who still have a diagnosis of incontinence are not able to safely and with dignity utilize those baby changing um, tables. So we're here to spread awareness of the issue. Um, we want to stop having to change our loved ones on dirty public restroom floors, leaving them at home and not being able to go out into the community. Or if we're out into the community, sometimes we have to leave them soiled or you know, cut our day out short and just leave because we don't have a proper place uh, to change them. And so we're here fighting for that. We, our goal is to, again, bring awareness and hopefully influence many organizations to install these tables for us. Those that can, we understand that not all organizations will be able to do this or will be able to um, accommodate us with this. For instance, some of your smaller businesses that may not have the space or the capacity to do that. We do understand that. But those who uh, do have the capacity and the space and new construction that, are, you know, that is coming forth, we hope that they will get on board with us and help to accommodate in, um, our loved ones with disabilities. Thank you, Keisha. And um, we kind of chatted beforehand. And so I think I'm going to let Christina, um, you know, start and kind of take this away with some of those, you know, personal experiences and with having those personal experiences, what are were some of the obstacles or still some of the obstacles that you're personally facing in Pittsburgh? And then we'll kind of go down the line with that. Sure. So again, our son ha does have autism and sensory processing disorder. There's some other little medical issues that are going on, which is why he, you know, he's still in pull-ups. Um, and it makes it very difficult in public situations, just like he's, Keisha was saying, that it's very difficult, especially when you have other children and you're trying to go somewhere in public and do things as a family. You want the whole family to be there. You don't want to have one parent and one child staying at home. We really want to be out in the community together and enjoying that time. And Sometimes our time is very limited anyways because of um, the world around him and him processing that very differently. We can be subjected to an hour or two anyways, so we're definitely not a family that can stay out from 9 in the morning till 5 p.m. But um, that being said, if we do only have an hour or two, we want to enjoy that hour or two, especially if he's having a good day, right? So when you come to these crossroads where he's having a great day, we're all having a great time, and then something like this comes up, and it normally always comes up. Um, mm -hmm. you, sometimes you're either stuck to have to go home early, leaving them soiled, like Keisha had said, or you kind of make that choice on what's going to be the the least amount of you know the the embarrassing, the the cleanliness. Like it is the dignity and what what's happening when we're doing this is just it's terrible, and it brings tears to my eyes every single time. So whether it's on a bathroom floor or in the back of our vehicle with people walking around in a public parking lot, um, it's not okay. It's not okay that we're changing our loved ones like that. And it makes me really sad and know that thousands of families across the U.S. are dealing with something like this. Um, and all of our stories are very different, but we can all benefit from this one change. And I think that's the bigger purpose, you know. Um, and the one day that I was changing him on the bathroom floor on a beach towel, and I just said, you know, there has to be something better. There has to be better options for our children, for other people going through something like this and what can be done. Um, so after the third time changing him that day in the hour that we were out, I just kind of started talking about it more. I started talking about family friends and started making videos and just, whoa, <laughs> realized that there was this whole mission going on across the US and these other great moms that are also fighting for this as well and other caregivers just around the US, just yes, this is such a huge need um, out in public facilities. And like Keisha said, we're not expecting every small place, every mom and pop place to have something like this. Um, but there are many organizations and many places that can afford something like this, um, and especially new establishments as well. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing here in Pittsburgh because that's where I live, is just reaching out and talking to, emailing, phone calling, meetings every week just trying to get a hold of different um, businesses and places to see if they'd be on board with something like this and really kind of showing the impact of, of what it's like and sharing our story but then the impact of 
this isn't just about our son. This isn't just about autism. This is such a bigger right. problem across our whole nation that I think that people don't really even realize unless they're impacted by it. So right. I'm, and I think the layers of people it affects, you know, right. the of people it affects. It's not just, it's not just our kiddos, you know, our young right. adults, it's our aging population, you know, as well and our elderly loved ones and all of that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important to this for us to keep talking about it, keep sharing our stories, mm -hmm. reaching out to other families and organizations as well, because it really is such a huge impact when one gets put in or, you know, when you see them out in public so that we're not doing this with our loved ones and changing them on floors or in the back of the car or cutting our day short because there's no accommodating restrooms in, in public, so. Right, now Paula, what have some of your experiences been? Yes, um, pretty much like Christina said, um, what really got me going, and um, I guess I hadn't even realized, I, I never dealt with it, but um, one one um, weekend coming home from Florida, coming back to Georgia, um, Nakaya sold her diaper, and um, she didn't do the usual soil, because usually we can just drive from Florida and make it to Georgia um, with her, you know, being okay. But this particular time, um, she had a, a big accident in her pull-up, and so... Um, we stopped over to a hotel to see if we could actually use an uh, uh, empty room, someone had, that had just checked out, said we can use the bed so we can change her, and we were told no. Basically, the only way um, we could use a bed is if we actually got a hotel room. And so it was like, okay, well, this is nonsense. So we left there, we went to urgent care. Like, surely, you know, the urgent care, they'll allow us to go in the back and use the bed to change. So we unloaded Nakaya, the dogs, and everybody out of the van, and um, took Nakaya into the urgent care and explain our situation. And the young girl stated that in order for us to go back to use the bed, we have to actually be seen by a doctor. Now this was a waiting room like full of people and you know, okay, but she's not sick. So we couldn't see, well, of course we couldn't um, use the bed in the back. So we did what, you know, I'm sure a lot of you all have done and what Christina says she does. Um, we went out to our van and thank God my husband was with me that day because Nakaya, right now she weighs about 95 pounds. Um, so we actually had to move everything out of the van and put Nakaya on the floor of the van. Um, Nakaya, she's 16 years old, and she's very aware of what is going on around her. So as um, well as it being embarrassing for me, it was embarrassing for her. And like Christina said, it definitely brought me to tears. I was actually trying not to show my emotions, but it actually brought me to tears to actually have to, you know, change her out in the open. This was an urgent care with a Walgreens drugstore right next to it, um, you know, people walking by and we actually had to um, change her. So at that moment, you know, it just got my fuel going and I came back um, to Savannah and um, I started a petition with um, change.org. And with that petition, I got over 17,000 signatures on it and somehow it's still going around. And then I think Christina, I think, is it you or Sarah? Um, one of you have a the same petition pretty much going around um, now. So that basically just got me stirred up to, um, wanting to do more and you know logging on and i saw that you know there are more moms out there than myself that are um fighting the same issue so that's definitely why i wanted to come on board and um and just make something happen and have there been any in your fight so far you've gotten the petition and all of that going um have there been any like a lot of opposition as you're approaching places or are you more in the phase of you're sending everything out right now yeah, knocking on doors and waiting for responses yes in the phase of um sending out i did actually um after that i did send a, um, a letter to the governor Depart or the department of transportation keisha gave me that information but you know that was a year ago never heard back from them but here in Savannah here, they're, um, they are building a new arena, you know, and they promise that this arena is going to be for everybody and everyone. So, you know, I got on the, on the email and I contacted the, the mayor, the city manager, um, I contacted um, the agricultural um, person that's in the planning committee, infrastructure. I've just basically contacted everybody. And I did hear back from the city manager basically saying he um, forwarded my email and he did forward my email to the, back, um, the project manager of the new construction. And I did hear back from the, um, the architect, architecture, um, you know, wanting to meet me. And also tonight here in Savannah, they're having a public forum for anyone that wants to come out and give a voice, give input on how they can better design the arena. So myself and a few other moms and their children, the yeah. kids too, we're actually going out there tonight at six o'clock and we're going to bring our input and hopefully <laughs> the new arena, they are going to make some space for our children. So, you know, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. 
All right, now Sarah, can yeah. you share with us as well? Um, yeah, well, well, my son Matthew, he's 19 now, so it's pretty, I mean, a bit like Paula, when as your kids get older and they hit puberty, it's even more inappropriate mm -hmm. that you're changing them anywhere where anyone can see. So, you know, we do the back of the car, but it's really, really not appropriate anymore. And this summer has really affected us pretty badly because we didn't go out half as much as we usually do because we just, I just thought, no, I just can't. You get to a stage where you just can't do it anymore. And um, so here in Milwaukee, I'm, I'm campaigning quite, quite heavily. And I started with the Panther Arena, which was my first uh, attempt and the, my first failure because I thought they were pretty much going to help because they were doing a $6 million renovation. And we had season ticket holders for two of the teams that play there. Um, so I had like some contacts there. Um, for, and so I asked because they were actually, they had all the bathrooms totally ripped out. There was like nothing in the bathrooms and there was plenty of room for a table. And I was told initially no. And then I went and actually insisted on meeting with, with people at the arena. And I took Matthew and explained you know, this is the size he is, this is what we have to do when we come here and you're spending all this money and I don't think that as a paying customer I need to be then laying you on the floor um, in the future when you're spending all this money. And so they actually shook hands on a table and I was like, you know, I was like, wow, this is great, my first like time I've tried this and, and they, you know, they're doing the table and I was like so happy. And then um, I was the um, max ability the the table vendor they were they'd given a price and everything and then all of a sudden they contacted me and said hey everything's gone a bit quiet over in milwaukee they haven't actually ordered the table and this was about october time and like the season of the sports teams was due to start so i contacted them and oh no we decided that it would be offensive because it was too close to the, the female bathroom because you would use the same entrance door um, and it was it would be offensive to all the other <laughs> bathroom users who were trying to get into the ladies' bathroom, and so we've decided not to not to do it. Um, so they put a, a very very high table in the first aid room, which is not actually in the arena; it's in the lobby. It's through two locked doors. You have to find someone to open it. The table was too high anyway, and so basically, I. They cut the legs off, but it was still too high because I need something, and most people with an adult, um, you know, someone in mobile as an adult needs someone with, uh, the, the chair has to be at the same height as the table. You cannot suddenly lift them two feet into the air. Mm -hmm. And so basically it's unusable. And they told me, don't, you know, they just stopped replying and said, don't, don't contact us anymore. Uh, and so I didn't do very well there, but there is a table um, in the new Fiserv Arena, it unfortunately isn't there. It's just been open for weeks ago, and the table is not there because they didn't order it in time. But I have been in contact with them, and they say it should be there within a couple of weeks. And and so I'm going to check that out. I've asked for a picture. I won't believe it until I see a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Now, Gina experiences yeah. that you have had um, and where you're at with all this. Yeah, you know, I think for me personally, um, the wake up calls are when you're traveling. And in fact, my biggest one was we were looking to relocate here to Pittsburgh. We came in May, I was traveling alone with my three kids. You know, you just come off an airplane, a delayed flight. And I couldn't, for me, I couldn't even find a family restroom in the airport within you know, any sort of means for where we were walking. And I attempted to go into a women's restroom with my three kids, including my 13 year old son in tow. Somebody was in the handicapped restroom for a long time without a disability. All you saw was all of their luggage and you know, your blood just starts to boil. Um, I'm going to be honest. And I was sharing this with Christina when we met in person last week, I didn't even go as far as an adult changing table. For me, it was just, how do we not have restroom accommodations that allow for families to be able to change, you know, their children are assist. My mother had a stroke last year and is partially paralyzed and you know, I'm trying to take her to a restroom as well. And it's just not easy. Even many of the handicaps, um, rooms for wheelchairs and things, you put two people in there to try and then change 
a pull up is not really family friendly. So for me, it's, it's a new mission. I will say that it is a very new mission. I'm going to do my best to support these moms, but one I'm definitely passionate about because the older my son gets, um, much like Sarah was just saying, Connor's 105 pounds and 13 years old. It's not easy. You know, you're bending over, he's leaning over you and you're trying to change his pull up and his weight is soon going to push me over, you know, onto a bathroom floor too. So I think it's just, you, you think about all of the accommodations that society has made and all of the missions that people fight. And it's sad to me that this one has just gone unnoticed. And, and I think Christina and I were sharing like parents in this community that are in similar shoes and not even this community in this situation or in similar shoes, you know, we really get behind businesses that support this. And I think people are starting to see that we use the example of target with the Christina's or with the Caroline's carts and coming out with clothing lines. And, and for me, I'm all about businesses that get behind the greater good of everybody. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm hoping to do with some of these awesome moms fight for what our kids and we right. as moms deserve too. Right. Thank you. And then Keisha. Um, I've had several instances over the years, but probably the one that sticks out the most for me is um, in 2012, um, I was at an actual medical facility, a doctor's appointment with my son that services only uh, people with disabilities. And uh, we had a long trip back home, two hours, and of course I needed to change my son. And went into the restroom. It was it was it was a pretty good sized restroom, you know, just one toilet in there. But there was not even a baby changing table in there. Um, and I just thought, I'm in an actual facility that facility that only services individuals with disabilities, and this restroom is just not accommodating at all. Not even for mothers with you know typical children that you know that are able to utilize the standard baby changing tables. And so. I was, I actually did not change him on the floor that day, um, but I have that day. I was just, my back was already hurting. Um, I opted to sit on the toilet and try to change him. And I actually have video of it. Um, that video was one of the first videos that I posted on Facebook that just really took off and, and went viral. But it just shows me changing him um, on the toilet in my lap. And it shows, he's ha he has the most severe form of cerebral palsy, spastic quad cerebral palsy and so he has a lot of involuntary movements jerking and all that stuff and it shows moments where uh, if I didn't you know catch him he would have been on the floor he would have fell on the floor mm -hmm. um so that was really the 20, turning point for me back in 2012 and um you know well I really just knew that I have to do something about this um and so that's kind of what led to my adv advocacy efforts in a couple of years ago you know just social media, met a few ladies on um, Facebook that were advocating for the same thing or wanted to do something about it and Changing Spaces campaign was born. Um, and so we are a national campaign now. I think we have about 18 or 19 states that um, have created chapters to help bring awareness and advocate for this issue to try to get adult size changing tables in as many um, public facilities as possible. Some of us are also pursuing legislation here in Georgia. We do have a bill sponsored for us, SB 53, Senate Bill 53, um, that we're hoping that we're able to get past um, this January session coming up, 2019. Um, it did not pass uh, the January 2018 session, but we did, you know, advocate, make visits to the Capitol, brought awareness to the legislators. Um, we had press conferences and we did get really good feedback on the bill. Um, we just need to do a little bit of tweaking with parting, and hopefully, prayerfully, this time in January, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to influence and get the, the bill to pass. And so uh, we have had some successes in opposition. Um, one of the first people to, in, one of the first organizations, rather, to install the tables for us is Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Eggleston location. They installed a table for us in their uh, family restroom. And then next was um, Hartsville, Atlanta, Jackson Airport. Um, and then there was a, a, crab, a crab, crab Apple Elementary School that has installed a table for us. Most recently, our biggest success has been with um, a brand new facility in Atlanta, Georgia, the um, Center for Advanced Pediatrics, where they're bringing a lot of different specialties together to try to um, 
service the children under, under one roof and collaborate their care together. And so the new facility is six floors and they have installed adult size changing tables, powered adult size changing tables wow. on all six mm -hmm. floors in their uh, family restroom. So awesome. that's, you know, that's great. Wow. Wow. But, but, you know, baby steps small, don't despise the, the small victories. We are getting there. Right. You know, change is mm -hmm. going to definitely come. And, you know, of course, this is, this is a state issue right now. I want to make this point. This is a state issue right now. So each state has to advocate for legislation, but we all come together and help collectively, you know, push legislation for whatever state. But eventually the goal is to pursue uh, federal legislation. I think California is already on that. And so we're going to be back in California and whatever uh, so that all across the U.S. we're able to, to do this. And I, I am so excited to have all of you guys here together, really showing, I mean, this is, this is happening everywhere and across, but what is so profound and powerful to me to think is that, like what Gina was saying, like that we, we have to even do this though. You know what I'm saying? It strikes me in such a crazy way as to why I started this fight um, myself and wanting to advocate for it heavily as well on my platform. When we look at, this is our youth, this is our young adults, and this is our elderly loved ones. Have you ever taken your grandmother who's 85 years old and tried to change her on a bathroom floor? I mean, this is for everyone. And it seems like such um, a crazy thought that all of us would have to be pushing and shoving and fighting and campaigning for something that is a bare necessity. This is human dignity, you know? And when it comes to the restroom issue, I feel like over the years, I've heard more about the other restroom issues, about, you know what I'm saying, what bathroom somebody's gonna go in, versus yeah. hearing about having human dignity to not change our loved ones on the floor. And so when you look at it from the big picture, we look at these arenas that are being built, you're spending $6 million and you can't spend $7,000 on a table. As a business person, I get it for small businesses and being a business owner myself in a brick and mortar business, I get the, you know, the thought for smaller establishments, but these arenas, I mean, shame on the Panther arena. I mean, honestly. You know, shame on these businesses that are putting millions and millions and millions of dollars into their stuff and they can't even provide you know, human dignity and, you know, pride and integrity for, you know what I'm saying? The people who come there and respect. And so, um, you know, that's my voice on it. I feel like I'm so happy that you ladies are out there, you know, doing this. And I want to know for anyone else who's listening that, you know, wants to get involved, that wants to push, that wants to help, you know, in the, the petition part, in the legal part of it, or just campaigning as a whole, how do they get involved and where do they get involved? So I don't know who wants to take the floor on that. Well, let me, can I just, I just, Paula? Well, I just wanted to add because I failed to mention um, two wonderful ladies here that's, that lives in a county, um, maybe about 30 minutes away from me, Effingham County. And they are the president and co-president of a special needs baseball team. And so a, a major league baseball player that's from that county, he um, re renovated this huge baseball field to make it accommodating for all kids with special needs. And along with that um, baseball field, they have restrooms out there, two restrooms where they did um, add a power height changing tables to the restroom. These moms, Angela, Shaw, uh, Angela Jackson and Pauline Shaw, they, um, you know, I guess know the issues and um, they both, I think they have kids with autism, but they yeah. both know the issues and they were um, with the county and the county actually put in two power height changing tables. And I went to visit the field um, a few weeks ago, and they are awesome. So I want to shout out um, Angela Jackson and Pauline Shaw and Effingham County Navigators for doing that. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, I wanted to add, too, uh, with the arenas, um, I, and I need to say this because um, it was very heartbreaking for me. Um, changing Spaces, Georgia had been in talks with the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium that has been recently built this year in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I contacted them way before the stadium was even completed and, you know, just kind of brought awareness to the issue. And we've had a lot of talks with them, uh, very positive talks, meetings, um, conference calls, very optimistic calls. And I just want to say that at the end of the day, we got the no. Uh, we got to know that they did not see the need to uh, install these tables for us. Um, even though I let it be known that I have 
patronize your business. Um, I can't bring my son, I have to bring my nephew, and, but I can't even enjoy what I'm there for because I'm thinking, wow, uh, I enjoy bringing my nephew, but I'd sure like to have my son here with me, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't even in the millions that was spent on this stadium. It was $1.6 billion. $1.6 billion. And you cannot, you don't see the need to install even one $7,000 table. Mm -hmm. That would bring more of the community to your facility. Yes. That would provide inclusion for people with disabilities. That prov would provide more accessibility and accommodations for people with disabilities. Um, that was a heartbreak for me, but that's not gonna stop me. It's pushed me, it's motivated me. And mark my word, they will eventually have adult slash shaming tables there because I'm not gonna stop until it happens. Um, but I do want to give a shout out also to the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom has the movement Changing Places, and they have been in this over 10 years and have been very successful. They, um, wow, uh, the advocacy work that they've done with, it, with their campaign has been very powerful. And so we model Changing Spaces here in the U.S. after their campaign, and they have been very supportive of us, and we have been in, um, very supportive of them as well. So I just wanted to put that out there and give a shout out to the United K Changing Places campaign. Um, they've done awesome, and we appreciate it. Yes, and I've saw, you know, lots of their things, and they are very forward, right? I mean, they have like triple, quadruple yes. the number of facilities we have here in the United States, correct? Yes, yes, yes. And they've been able to uh, be a lot more successful, too, because, you know, there's just, there's so, there's a lot of difference between how government and, and legislation, you know, operate mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom versus here in the United States. Um, like, we've had the um, advocates in the U.K., um, question a lot about why they don't see us advocating a lot for the hoist to go along with the changing tables. We do here in the US, U.S. advocate for the hoist as well, but we kind of present it more as an optional thing because right. of, you know, we have to come about it at a different way. We did get advice on how to go forth with this campaign and we were advised by, you know, legislatures and, 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 and people like that to, um, first go for advocating for the uh, power of adult size changing tables, mm -hmm. but also make, um, let it be known about the hoist and how it will help us and, you know, present that as an option to, an optional thing to organizations um, once they install the adult size changing tables. So I just want to make it known that the hoist are, is not off the table. We do make mention of it. We advocate for that as well, but we, we present it in such a way as, you know, it's an option for organizations to to add in addition to the tables if they're able to. And I think one thing to note as well, just so viewers that are listening, or if maybe, you know, this isn't something that affects you on a daily basis, just for you to know, that you can still change a newborn or a child on an right. adult size changing table. Right. So when you think about this in the big picture, you could install one table that everyone could use. So this right. isn't like you have to have a separate adult one and a separate baby one, and you can't have both. Um, and so, I mean, that you have to have both, that you could have just one. And so the ridiculousness to even think someone spent a billion dollars, I don't know if anyone else is catching that, that's viewing this right now, that's ridiculous. That's yeah. just ridiculous. There's, there's no need for it. There, there should be no acceptance of it. It should not be acceptable in our society today. It just shouldn't. I mean, there's, it's, yeah, to me, to me, I have no, no other words. <laughs> Yeah, to, to me that's absolutely beyond disappointing because you, what sort of people are uh, that's right. it makes you think what sort of people are they that yeah. that they're spending that amount of money and mm -hmm. it's like peanuts compared to that i know in the new fiserv arena the artwork is two million dollars so wow. that was a half a billion dollar arena so you can imagine that in the the georgia one there's going to be artwork yeah, yeah. They, that's the thing that they're doing now. Oh, we have to have expensive artwork yes. in our arenas. So, how can you even put a single painting on a wall before you think of the needs of, of right. people who actually are going to be needing to use it? Mm -hmm. It's awful. And I think that if anybody tuned in back in June, July, I did have um, two parents that came on. They're, they're also business owners here. They don't have a lot of family that lives here. And they were very transparent 
about their struggle. They, they are so overwhelmed that they're really not even in the campaigning realm at the moment. It's just trying to figure out, one, how they're going to stay afloat. They have a, a daughter that is full needs. She is a teenager, and um, they can't go anywhere. I mean, it's like an hour at a time. Um, her husband now has pulled out his back three times. You know, he's been injured. He's been at home needing therapy. And just the thought of that, that what does this come to in our society? That, you know what I'm saying? We can't even in, in grocery stores, in malls, in places that we could actually go out and be able to walk around and be within the community, especially when we talk about the caregiver community, where people are so segregated, you know, in the sense that we feel alone a lot of times. We feel that we're not, you know, being heard. We feel alienated. Um, um, and so to be able to, you know, to have all these establishments that don't even provide it at a big level for people to be able to walk around and safely be able to change their loved ones, um, you know, it isn't really when we talk about mental health and all of that, that goes into a whole nother layer, you know, when you're saying, well, you know what, we just have stopped going places. So what does mm -hmm. that mean? So are your, your child gets older, your elderly loved one gets older and you just don't leave the house? I mean, how is that right? I right. mean... It's, it's funny that you should say that, Tammy, because in my mind, I think about all of the things that people will protest. And sometimes it's like walk a day in caregiver shoes. And until you're doing it, I mean, my friends will always say, I don't know how you do it. And you just kind of power through your day because it's what we as caregivers do. Men, women, moms, dads, grandparents, whomever does it. We power through the day just like everybody else, but there's an added element of powering through. So when you add something as advocating to to a plate of an already full, you know, an already full plate, it's you think about what we could do if this was the only thing that that we could do. And you say, all right, what's it gonna take to get somebody that isn't a caregiver to wake up and help start, you know, the same sort of protest that we're seeing for so many other things and rally behind it. And mm -hmm. me and my brain, I'm like, wow, what if we took a thousand kids with special needs and put them in front of the arena? Would that yes. be what we want? I mean, you yes. think about creating some sort of movement. Yes. And if that doesn't make somebody wake up, I don't know what will. And, and I think that's where my, unfortunately, my brain is in marketing. My brain, and exactly. My brain too, Gina. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy to me that that's what it's coming to. I feel like. Right. And it's so sad. And until somebody's affected by it personally, you know, I think that that happens so much until it happens in your life, to your family, to your friend, to your loved one. It's like the world just keeps on going and doesn't think about, and this is just, this is just normal human dignity. Like people use the restroom. This isn't even, I mean, it's such a simple thing. You think to yourself, like people are always like, really? I didn't even know that was happening. I feel like that's happening right now with my son in his transition year of turning 21. They're like, isn't there a day program for that? Isn't there a bathroom for that? No, there's not. <laughs> there's not, you know? Um, but I feel it's like so many layers. Go on. People, people forget the human interest of it all. People with disabilities are still people. We're, they're still human. They're still citizens, you know, still tech paying individuals. And we deserve, our families, we deserve um, equality, every right that everyone else has. And, you know, you're right. When we tell people and make a, a, a about what's going on, a lot of them, the, the first response is, I did not even think of that. You're so right, but I see what you're saying. And that's how we're able to get them on board. So we're just gonna have to keep pushing. There's going to be opposition always, but we just mm -hmm. can't let that stop us. And yes, our families, we're tired. We're hurting physically, emotionally, and mentally. And we know that sometimes, some of us, we just can't go anymore. We need a break from this campaign as well. And that's when the rest of us need to step in and just kind of just keep going forth. It's okay if you need a break from campaigning or whatever, Take that break. We understand all of us need to break, but I just want everybody to know who's campaigning that you still have those of us behind you that are going to still back you. You are still a part of this movement, and until you're able to get back up and go out and bring more awareness, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna back you, and we're gonna step in and stand in the gap for you, and, and keep going. Um, and to address your question earlier, Tammy, how can people get involved if they want to? And you don't have to have a disability or even a family. Right. Member. No. Exactly. Get involved. 
if you just go and tell one or two people and then they'll tell it, you know, about what's going on. Hey, you know what I heard today? I didn't even mm-hmm. know this was a problem. Um, but to get in, if you want, if anyone wants to get involved with the Changing Spaces campaign, please visit our website, changingspacescampaign.com. You can research on Facebook at Changing Spaces Campaign. Um, you'll also see other states um, with um, Facebook pages. You may see Changing Spaces Wisconsin, Changing Spaces Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. Changing Spaces Alabama, and so forth. Uh, but the main page is Changing Spaces Campaign. Uh, we are on Instagram at, um, at changing.spaces. And Twitter, it's at CS underscore campaign. Um, so... Keisha, are we yeah. able to drop those in the comments below when we're okay. done with this live, if we're able to do that for people, if they didn't they want to jot it down? Sure. And our email address is also available. Um, the email address is changingspacesga at gmail.com. Um, and that was the initial Georgia email, but any state, anybody can e- email, email, email us at that address and we will put you in contact with whoever um, is over a chapter. If there's already a chapter there, if anybody wants to start a chapter, we will help you do that as well. It's nothing complicated at all. We don't expect you to be out there really pushing and doing stuff, you know, every day. It's um, on an as-you-can basis, you know, because we understand our lives and we're very busy and tired individuals. So it's not anything stressful that we, you know, you have to do really. Uh, so, but right. anybody's welcome to come and help. We welcome it. So they can reach out to you guys via email, ask, tell you what state they're in, and then you can help them find support in that area. Yes, most definitely. They can send us a a message on, you know, social media, whatever. Okay. However (laughs) Um, they they want to reach out, you guys will be there. Yeah. There's, it's access um, on the website, changingspacescampaign.com, where you can submit information and we'll we'll get that as well. However you choose to reach us, we're going to be available to you. Now, for any other businesses that have just put in tables or have always been firm on this that have tables, any other shout outs that we want to give? Because we love our businesses that already have been proactive and moving forward and doing this. Well, I don't have a business, but I forgot we forgot. Well, I forgot to shout out Sabrina Kimball um, in Florida, who has definitely been making huge strides um, to get changing tables um, at like the Florida State University, um, their, their gymnasium or their arena, the Orlando Airport. Um, have a few changing tables, as well as some of the rest areas um, in the northern part of Florida. So Sabrina Kimball and um, she's with Universal Changing Places. And um, and just like Keisha said, basically on her website as well, too, she has like sample letters. Like if you want to um, write a letter to someone in your community, a business in your community, she has like sample letters um, that she's used in the past that you can just basically make the letter your own and take it to different businesses to um, actually help ask for these adult Mm -hmm. papers. That's wonderful. Sarah, Christina, Gina, Keisha, any other places? I know Keisha, you were talking about all the places in Atlanta already that have added those tables. Any other ones that we know? Um, I don't have any confirmations yet, but I have been in talks with, um, like I said, I'm I'm in Columbus, Georgia, but I'm only an hour and a half, two hours from Atlanta. So I'm always in Atlanta. Uh, But I am in talks with a hospital here in Columbus, Georgia that services, you know, pediatrics. And I've already met with the chief of pediatrics there. And so hopefully, (laughs) hopefully that'll be another victory uh, for us. Um, I've also been in talks with some other organizations as well. And so as things progress, I definitely will be posting about them. Look out for that. Um, Paula, I too would like to give a shout out to Sabrina Kimball in Florida, Universal Changing Places. She's done a lot. Um, we've collaborated a little bit in the past um, and some people kind of get, get us mixed up, but I just want yeah. people to know that we are essentially advocating for the same thing. Yes. Um, Sabrina, Sabrina established Universal Changing Places before Changing Spaces. And so um, uh, uh, some of us didn't even know about Sabrina's organization at the time Changing, changing Spaces started. I didn't, didn't, but Um, Yeah, we're essentially advocating for the same thing. So there's no conflict there, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And then Sarah, did you have any you wanted to add? Yeah, Discovery World um, in Milwaukee, they should have their bathroom open soon, maybe October time. And um, a nature center where, where, I think it's pronounced that, nature center in Franklin, they're they're having a, a 
big of a bit of an overhaul and they're putting a bathroom in and I'm pretty sure that someone has asked for a table and they're on board with that but they're fundraising for that it was like a, a non-profit so they're fundraising but I think they're definitely um, planning on the table and um, Wisconsin State Fair got back to me just this week so I, the person I contacted left the week that I sent the email so the email got lost and then when I followed up they were like, oh, yeah, because I thought they'd ignored me, but they actually um, are going to bring it to the next meeting. So well, I'll wait and see, and I'll keep following that up if they say if they say no, I'll follow that up for a while and push. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, Christina, did you have any others to add? Or do you have that our list? I know we kind of have all compiled a list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I keep, I keep track of the list and see if there's anyone that's added. Um, I found out just through advocating and talking to people that there is one at uh, Pittsburgh um, Children's Hospital here in Pennsylvania. I didn't know there was one there. I've changed our son multiple times on the floor mm -hmm. at appointments there. So it's nice to know that there is one. I kind of talked to them about maybe putting some signs or something because it's not mm -hmm. beneficial if nobody knows it's there. <laughs> so um, it's on the third floor there, um, but I think it's on the list. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people, but I'm because nothing's like public yet, I, I can't say too much. Um, but I have been talking to um, Pittsburgh International Airport, um, and they're highly considering putting in an adult size changing table in like a more handicapped accessible restroom to have that, and it would also be more sensory friendly. That's also something that I've um, I feel really strongly about because it is something that affects our son a lot. Um, so not these bright lights and crazy music like you're in a nightclub, you know. <laughs> Tone all that down like we don't need that <laughs> I think a lot of people don't need that but um, I think it would be great if they do something like that they're um, really on a mission to get a um, sensory room built at the Pittsburgh International Airport as well so I know that that's something that they're all really talking about um, adding in whether or not it's happening I don't think that's a hundred percent for sure yet but um, there's a lot of talk about it so that's super exciting um, and then I've just different people I've been talking to. There was one table that's been ordered so far, but because it's not publicly known, I can't say. But as soon as it is, you guys will hear about it. <laughs> so hopefully in the next like three weeks, um, I'll be able to share that publicly. Um, but I was just so excited that it got ordered. <laughs> so uh, it's coming, it's coming. Um, but as soon as um, more things start happening, I will definitely share on my page with you guys as well. Um, I just, it's super exciting when that first day was bought. <laughs> So and I, it's happening. It's going to happen. The more we talk, the more we share, the more we push. It's going to happen. I feel it. It's it's happening. Yeah. And I know Christina on your page, you've started a feed and on the on your advocate community page, we also have a feed. So we can drop both of those below. So people want to join those pages and those communities and whatnot. They can also keep track and we can all keep throwing them up there. Um, Keisha, is there one like is there a on the changing spaces, is there a one central, like on the the, e, the, not the email, the website, is there a page that goes to the ones you guys have heard about? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of your question. Um, is there a spot on your website for, um, it's a changing spaces, right? I don't want to get it mixed up. Changing spaces. Changing spaces campaign. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that goes through all the places that you guys know about that have changing the right facilities. Um, they're, they're currently, I'm going to be doing some updates to the website in, in which we can add that. That information is, we do have that information um, that I'm going to get an update and put on the website. Okay. Um, but we do have, um, on the website, we do have um, things like Paula mentioned, like sample letters and stuff to your legislature, uh, policymakers and to other businesses um, and things of that sort. Um, we have vendor information, organization, um, companies who supply these tables, and things of that sort. We have information on how you can get involved, et cetera, et cetera. But, but I am going to be updating that website with that information. As okay. soon as that gets the, up, the latest list on all, all who are involved. Okay, perfect. And then, Gina, did you have any places? I, no, I, to be honest, I haven't. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> But I'm going to make it my mission. Too. That's right. <laughs> I think for me, I just keep going back to it's seven thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Seven thousand dollars for the table to so a lot of organizations. I mean, you're talking about putting in family restrooms and things like that. So I get it. I totally get it. But yet I don't get it. You know, it's so crazy. 
And I think what I was telling Christina, the story of one of my clients and, and, and I don't mean this to take a, a different approach, but he, we were talking about gender bathrooms and he, he was like, I don't, you know, all this fight for the gender bathrooms. And I said, you know what, when you put a different hat on and you say, that's a great place for me to be able to take my son and be able to change him without judgment. He his like eyes opened and he's That's a business right. owner himself. And he's like, it's now that you say it that way, I guess I never thought of it. He's like, but I don't get it. Like why I can't, why then aren't more making that their mission than even just the gender side, just make it accessible for everybody, you right. know, I mean, for everyone. <laughs> and, and that's where I think for me, I just time to roll up the sleeves and start getting some stuff done. And it's a kudos to these moms that have tried so hard and to anybody listening, like help get a voice. I mean, you have a voice, you have the ability to help and raise awareness around it. It, it affects you in some way. It affects right. you. Maybe not your immediate family member. It might be a niece, a nephew, a best friend's kiddo. There's, there's a way that you are touched and get behind it and help. So. Yes. And tomorrow I'm very excited. Um, tomorrow morning, um, Preslet of North America, which is the manufacturer of the tables is going to be on. And we are going to be talking about kind of their mission, the background of them, all of the different adaptive equipment. We are going to be focusing on the changing tables primarily, but they make a lot of amazing adaptive equipment that is there. But really the biggest part of it that we're going to be discussing is the injury rate you know, that, and that's what we kind of talked about a little bit before, to caregivers, workers, nurses, you know, in nursing home facilities, I mean, everywhere, when you're not using proper equipment and how that's putting, you know, the worker themselves, the parent at risk for them also being injured as well as the loved one for if it's the not right equipment falling off of it or getting hurt um, that way. So I'm excited for that. That will take place tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we'll, I'll be sharing more about that later. But ladies, I am so excited that you guys spent the last 56 minutes <laughs> of your morning with the Honor Advocate in here on this show. Um, I am blessed and thankful that I've gotten the opportunity to know all of you over the last couple of months. And some of you I've known a little bit longer than that. And so I'm just so excited that um, this movement is moving forward. It's making progress. And I hope that everyone jumps on board. Is there any last words that anybody wants to leave us with? Well, Tammy, I just want to say, I just want to say thank you, Tammy, for providing this platform for us to uh, allow our voices to be heard. Not often do we get that. Um, not often do people embrace us. So we appreciate you so very much for all you've done. You've just really been a blessing for this whole movement. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And Paula, I know you, Paula hey. was raising her hand in the uh, square. <laughs> hey, Keisha, Keisha, Keisha basically said um, what I wanted to say. So yeah, definitely, Tammy, um, great meeting you. And thank you for um, allowing us to get our voice out there. And then I did want to mention, yeah, my husband is home right now um, going through um, therapy because he had a torn rotator cuff for lifting Nakaya. So um, he had surgery on his, his shoulder on August the 9th. So he's at home now um, recovering from that. So yeah, we need these adult size changing tables because me and my family, we definitely like going out into the community. And um, so we definitely need to keep pushing. And again, like I said, ladies, one of my co quotes this morning when where two or three are gathered in Jesus Christ's name, there shall he be in the midst. So we just keep fighting and it's definitely going to happen. But thank you all ladies. Oh, thank you guys as well. The next show needs to be all of our kiddos on yeah. here live with us. <laughs> Kaya was awesome the day she was on. She stole the show. She stole yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> at school now, so. <laughs> all yes, right. Let's make that show happen. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, ladies. And on that note, thank you all for tuning in this morning to the On Air Advocate. If you would like to know about any more of our services, resources that we do have available, head on over to onairadvocate.com. Also, if you would like to become a part of our private community, head up to the top of this Facebook page, hit the blue tab that says visit group and join us all in the community. Thanks again, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.